Come on, Watson, grab your hat and coat. The game is afoot. And bring your revolver. This could be a dangerous one. Right, looking about. So then, so come, my son, strive to understand what I have found out through my calculations. Who is this talking? Why, it's Nostradamus. Now then, I used to be into Nostradamus a long time ago. And, uh, but I got thwarted. But still, some of the things in his quatrain stuck in my head. And um, I'm taking another look at it. I do feel this is the, uh, the next thing that I shall be led to find out more about. There we go. Um, so here is part of uh so w what was stopping me before partly was the um getting hold of all of them the whole quatrain and a thing i probably could have found it if i'd looked hard enough anyway so i've got hold of it i've got all the all the writing and there's a few bits which aren't um translated but i've translated them so i'm i'm in possession of the whole lot because they uh, in the 7th century, which would be sort of the 600s, um, that stops at 642. Uh, so you've got this gap. And I think that's what put me off before. But there are 58 others bunged in the end, which are taken from what he's saying. They are the more immediate prophecies from when he wrote them, 1555, to the end of the century. So, where then you go after that, I don't know. But if you just read them in order, they're just crazy. I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So, I notice here he said they're not in chrono chronological sequence. Um... Written more fully in my other prophecies, composed at some length, not in a chronological sequence, in prose. Limiting the places and times and exact dates so that future generations will see. So this is partly his le letter to um, King Henry, I think, when he writes this. Anyway, it doesn't matter when he writes it. So he gives a clue there. They're not in a chron chronological order. They're in a sequence of prose. So the rhyming, so we can look at the original French, uh, see how the rhyme ends, and I've, I've sort of thought whether I should, because most of his quatrains, both lines one and three and lines two and four rhyme, so which ones do you take? I've gone with two and four, I've been having a look to see if one and three could make more sense, but to me... Two and four seems to be making sense, seems to be leading to something. Um, I've composed books of prophecies, each containing 100 astronomical quatrains, which I want to condense somewhat obscurely. So he wants to hide the, the meaning of it. The work comprises prophecies from today to the year 3797. That's nothing that I'd seen that before. I don't, what? What? <laughs> he's he's going all the way to thirty-seven ninety-seven. So blimey, you know, I mean, that, that's worth knowing about, isn't it? Before you start deciding, and, and so taking from the time when he wrote them um, until until thirty-seven ninety-seven is a period of 2,442 years. Okay. Now, funnily enough, that divides by 19. I mean, you know, straight off the bat, a number which divides into 19. He talks about moon cycles. And, and in here, I was sort of, 
starting to get into how they might be laid out, but that was before I read the, the thing about the sequence of prose. So since I've found out about the sequence of prose, so they were, I, first of all, I took all the planetary uh, mentions. Is there anything mentioned in a planet? Now, Neptune hadn't been discovered then yet. So that might be Uranus, because there's no mention of Uranus. Anyway, that might come in useful later. But what I've started to do is take the, the rhyming... So the rhyming ends, right, and seeing what sort of sequence we get. And and we're getting something. We are getting something, but I've got to do quite a lot more before uh, I get anything else. <clears throat> Most of them have been integrated with astronomical calculations corresponding to the years, months and weeks of the regions. Countries and most of the towns and cities of all Europe, including Africa and part of Asia, where most of all these coming events are to transpire. They are composed in a natural manner. Indeed, someone who would do well to blow his nose may reply that the rhythm is as easy as the sense is difficult. That, O oh, most humane king, so he is writing to the king in this one, is because most of the prophetic quatrains are so ticklish that there is no way of making through them, nor is there any interpreting of them. So when I read this, I thought, you know, he's, he's almost saying it's like he can't even interpret them. And I think maybe somewhere else in the letter he mentioned, sort of spoke almost like that. So it's like anyone thinking, well, if you can't <laughs> interpret them, how's anyone else supposed to? But then we come to that first one again. You know, he he he's he's definite. If you read the whole letter, sort of thing, he's definitely doing this for a reason. He wants someone to work it out in the end. So, you know, love a challenge. Let's go. Uh, um, and uh, I'll be reporting on what I find. Obviously, All right. Okay, ciao, ciao.